Thank you for coming. No worries. So this is M Messina, who's had a successful salon for over 30 years in Melbourne mm -hmm. called Radiance Beauty, which is in Camberwell. And we're going to chat about what your successful actions are and what you, you, how you evolved in business and things like that. Sure. Great. So you're a qualified beauty therapist, right? Yeah, qualified beauty therapist. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I qualified in um, 1986. Oh, wow. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and so then once you finished your qualification, did you go straight into owning your own salon? Did you work for somebody else? Like what happened after you finished your, your diploma? Diploma, yeah. there we yeah. go. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't go um, into business straight away. I was actually working um, in a salon for uh, three years and I loved it. I, um, I actually worked in a few salons. I was lucky enough to um, work for somebody who had about three salons, I believe, and I worked in all of them. So I had a, um, I was able to work in different suburbs, different clientele, and um, uh, spruce up on all my skills and get my speed up. And that was probably the, the main thing when you start working in a salon, you're a bit slow. You're good, but you're slow. And then you get your speed up and you know, you're able to handle many things at one time and anyway you become more of a pro right and then but I've always had the hankering to um just to do it uh for myself okay and then I went into business after about three years maybe three and a half years of uh, working for somebody else and in fact I bought the salon of the owner for whom I worked ah I see hmm. and so along with that came all the clientele as well yeah Oh, beautiful. So the salon owner didn't take the clientele with her or? No, she just uh, was getting out of the business. Mm. So, um, and I um, took it off her hands. And that was Radiance Beauty, right? No. Oh. That was, that was called um, Dominique Christiane. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was in Melbourne though? That was in Melbourne, in Camberwell. Okay. Yeah. And then I changed it to Radiance Beauty Therapy back then. That was in 1989. Wow. Oh, so you've been in Camberwell since 1989? Since 1989, yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, different locations in Camberwell, yeah. but in Camberwell since 1989. Okay. Mm. So what, what, what was the deciding factor for you to go, okay, cool, now I'm going to take the plunge from being employed to being an, being an employer? Mm. Well, um, I really thought that I could do it myself. I could do it better myself. Fair enough. <laughs> so so um, I had a following, like I'd, I'd built uh, myself up a following of clients and which means that, you know, they wouldn't go to any other therapist, they would come to me. So I felt secure in that, that I knew I had clients, right? And then I wanted to run the business, uh, the salon, the way I wanted to run it. I wanted it to look the way I wanted it to look and, you know, all that sort of thing. I wanted to use the products I wanted to use, you know, that sort of thing. So the only way to uh, make that happen is to go out on your own. But that can be a bit daunting. So what I did was I actually worked out how it could happen. Yeah. And um, I sort of list out like how it could be, how it could actually eventuate. And, um, and then I, I worked out that it wasn't that hard for that to happen. And so uh, I went ahead and did it. And it's, it was fun. It was such a blast to actually go ahead and do that, to to actually create, um, you know, that game, that, you know, your own salon, you know, it's, it's, it's a real buzz, actually. Wow. Mm. Wow. I love it. Yeah. So as you've been progressing along, what would you say has been the main business motto or the business structure that you've followed by? Well, as a beauty therapist, um, I have a, I have always had a focus in in my um, industry. Like you know, the beauty industry is very broad. Like there's so many things that you can do in the beauty industry. But my focus has always been skin, right? So I I really focused on that, and I really made myself known as someone who can fix someone's skin. Oh. So that was like I'd always strive for that. So I'd always be looking at you know, which products can I use that will uh, allow me to achieve that? What treatments allow me to achieve that? So always improving my skills and my knowledge. That's really important. So having good skills and having good knowledge 
on um, how to achieve what you want to achieve in the beauty industry. Oh, so that could actually translate into whatever industry, whatever segment of the beauty industry they're in, whether oh, it's yeah. lashes, whether it's waxing, whether it's skin, whether it's IPL, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Got Absolutely. It. You have to have the knowledge um, and build up your skill on doing that. And then, of course, um, you know, one of the big things that really helped me in, in business is your communication with people. Okay. You mean clients or specifically what? Yeah, cl- uh, clients primarily. Okay. But um, as I got bigger, definitely with staff, um, like your, abil- your ability to communicate to people and c- to get um, yourself understood and understand what they're saying, understand what their need- needs and wants are, is really, really, really important. And, and it helps you greatly in business. Like, you know, it helps you in sales for sure, you know. Um, you know, if you, if you can't communicate to people, how can you, you know, <laughs> exist? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How can you exist? So um, that was one of the things I did uh, pretty much from the get go is do courses in communication so that I could, you know, feel happy within myself in communicating. And that really helped me in business. Wow. So you would say that as almost as part of your marketing structure, you're, you put a lot of energy into really building an, a good rapport with each individual client yep. who would then hopefully go and refer you yep. and be very loyal and stuff like that. And you would say that that so the key to it, to remaining, having loyal customers was not only building rapport, but also for them to go and refer, yep. but also it built um, trust because you had the quality control aspect coming into it as well. Yeah, The absolutely. quality of the product you were delivering. Yeah, yeah. And would you say that that was probably the key marketing tool that you've used? As far as word of mouth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, a lot of clients, a lot of my clients would go ahead and recommend um, Radiance uh, to their friends. And that was because of the service that was provided, like the, the facial, the results gotten from doing the, um, the treatment. Okay. And, um, and working with uh, the products that I, that I work with is very important as well. Like you can't, you need to, in the beauty industry, in the skin industry, you have to source out what, you know, what your focus is going to be as far as skin is concerned. Mm-hmm. So what product are you going to work with? Um, you have to believe in the philosophy of the product that, that you're working with. And you marry with that product, right? And then from by using that product, your treatments evolve and, um, and you're, you're able to get results according to the products that you use. And then, of course, according to the equipment that you use. Now, all of that, all of that, all of that actually just results in um, results in the skin beautiful so when you get results in the skin your clients will recommend you and they do and they will keep coming back to you and um and then you, your business just continues to exist now the other thing too though which is really important in um in the caring of someone's skin mm-hmm. is your recommendations right so you it's it's a, it's a beauty therapist's job to recommend what program somebody is to go on right and um and that's and that is key to having your clients return Mm. like if you don't put people on a program people get busy it's not that they don't love you it's not that they don't want to return or anything they get busy doing other things and they need to be constantly reminded um, of what they need to do to get the best results for their skin so you put them on a program and then sometimes that's not even enough. You have to call them. You have to keep reminding them. You have to keep presenting yourself, reminding them that you are there and that, you know, you're here to look after their skin. So it, it's, and that's a constant thing. You cannot just uh, rest on your laurels on that at all. So that translates also into every business really, doesn't it? Yeah, You have to much. continue that communication to your clients to remind them that you exist, you care about their well-being, yep. you care about whatever service that you're offering them yep. and continually. And, and what, how, do, how do you usually communicate to them? Do you communicate through emails? Do you communicate through what kind of forms do you usually? Uh, email, definitely email yeah. um, and SMS, um, uh, phone calls. And they're the main ones. Okay. Um, but from the get-go, they get a program on what they need to do. And and um, doesn't mean that every client will do the program. That's I'm not saying that that will happen. Yeah. Um, but if you don't give them a program, you can bet your bottom dollar they won't do a program. 
Fair know. enough. <laughs> so that also translates into lashes as well. It's like their aftercare system. And yeah. it's also, I mean, from my viewpoint, maybe when you are recommending that they, their program, you're also putting yourself into a position of authority on the yes, subject. Absolutely. Do so you become more, whatever that word would be, but more more of an authority on the subject, so you become more trustworthy and all of those things that replica, that are a repercussion from that. Yeah, and you, and you get your results from um, having them come back regularly. Like, you, you get the results. Like, uh, uh, you, you never get results from being a one-hit wonder, you know. So, and then, and then you get results and then they see that they're getting results and then they trust you more and they keep coming back. I, I really can't stress more um, enough that... Like it's all about getting a result on the client Got it. and may ha- getting them to be happy about the result that they're getting. Sometimes you have to show that they've gotten a result, show them and say, look at this, look at the improvement here, you know. Wow. And, and, and once they, they can see that, they just, they just keep coming back. And, um, and from a skin aspect, like, like um, not everyone is um educated on skin so there's a lot of educating that you have to do why it's important what would happen if if you don't look after your skin what's your what's your skin going to be like when you're 60 Mm -hmm. um you know you're going to say oh i wish i'd had done something when i was 30 or 20 um that sort of thing so it's it's a lot about educating the client and getting the result perfect Mm -hmm. i love it so we were talking about before how you have a lot of word of mouth. Is there anything that you do you ever encourage word of mouth, or do yeah. you what do you do to encourage it? Well, I have this little little uh, uh, system for mm. a little reward system for my clients that um, when they recommend someone to the salon, mm-hmm. the person that they recommend their first treatment is half price. Wow! And the person who recommends also gets a half price treatment. Oh wow! So that's. So they get into like a little bit of a game. So, oh, who else can I recommend and that sort of thing. Um, so that, that's kind of cute. Um, but for example, I had one client who had just won a big hamper worth about $1,000. And that was from a, a Christmas competition that if you bought a voucher for somebody, you go into a drawer for a big hamper. And this lady uh, won. Now this lady um, bought a voucher for, for somebody and she has that that but but i'm just saying that this is this is from the referral system mm-hmm. so she had the, the she bought a voucher for this person this person had already been to the salon but that person had recommended uh to somebody else and that other person had recommended to somebody else and that that same person recommended somebody else <laughs> oh my gosh and then i've got this little group of people <laughs> who are all happy about coming to radiance and they've all gotten the half price treatment and one of them didn't even know she was getting a half price treatment and anyway it's super cute it's oh super cute so rewarding people for recommending it definitely works definitely and definitely works do you say it verbally to them or do you give them a piece of paper when they finish their treatment like how do you inform them of the referral system that you use i do it verbally yeah okay, okay yeah. cool but it could be written down as well. You could have a little, you know, card saying if you uh, refer someone, you get a half price treatment and so does the person that you've referred. Perfect. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, and so from work, so you've had experience working for somebody else and mm-hmm. then you've also had experience working for yourself and with staff. What would you say the pros are for working for yourself and the pros are for having your own salon? So for uh, working for yourself, if you're like if you have like a set way that you want to do things, then you, you working for yourself, you actually you know are able to to do that right, and and that's you know there's a freedom connected with that. There's a lot of responsibility um, connected with working for yourself, but there are a lot of freedoms as well. So and and a lot of rewards from that. So. You know, if you want to be the master of your own show, then that's that's the the way to do it. Uh, working for somebody else is great as well, and you can be the master of your own show working for somebody else, and you get to learn a lot when you're working for somebody else. Um, and that's you know, it's it's really depends on the on the um, person themselves, right? What they really want to achieve for themselves individually. But you know, you you. But at anything you do, you have to keep working at it, like creating on it. And if it's running a business and, you know, um, learning about all the 
the ins and outs, the the financial side of things, uh, the legal side of things, the um, all the stock control, all of that sort of thing. You know, you want to do all of that, and then you know you be probably want to be running your own business. But you know, having said that, you could be doing that for somebody else as well. Very true. Yeah, that's a manager a salon basically, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, as a as an owner, you just have a um, I guess you just have that little bit more freedom. Got it. Yeah. Cool. And then lastly, what did you find was the hardest thing in keeping your salon running? And then what did you do to overcome it? Um, The hardest thing was probably um, staff was the hardest. Got it. Um, What aspect of staff? uh, Staff retention. Okay. Yeah. Um, Because in in the beauty industry, it is a type of industry where... Um, you can go out and start up yourself, mm-hmm. like I did that, you know. Um, so, uh, in so when you have a uh, when you've got your own salon and you want people to hang around, um, you you create an environment that they like working there. Um, but how do I get over the the point of where they they want to move off and do their own thing, mm-hmm. right? So. Um, when, uh, as a bigger salon, you just, ha- you just employ more people, you just employ more people as a smaller salon. Um, it's about, it's a matter of really choosing who you have working for you. Got so it. that's, you know, it's depending on how big you are. Um, I think if you, if you employ a lot of people, you have the luxury of having the, the turnover, you might have a, a whole training program, you know, um, that you employ more people, you train them. There's a whole system. There's a machine that goes with that. If you're a smallest, if you're a smaller operation, then um, choosing the right one um, to stay with you, um, and making it, and making it so that that person can feel like it's their own salon. Fair enough. Yeah. Do you offer like bonus systems or reward systems or something like that as an incentive, or how how would you recommend that you do it so you can retain those beautiful staff when you get them? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Re- uh, rewarding them is really important. Bonuses are really important. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then just giving them the freedom to be, right? So you, I give them the guidelines of what's needed and wanted mm-hmm. and, and then I just allow um, them to do that, right? So I'm not going to micromanage them. Even though I, I, I'm not a big operation, but I'm, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to micromanage them. I want them to manage themselves. And um, and they and if I've chosen the right person, they'll just flourish with that. And I have. I've got a girl who I who I love dearly, and, and and I just let her be, and she just flourishes, and she does. She just does the right thing. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So um, just to end off, what would be your main marketing tip that you would give to others wanting to? have their own salon, whether it be a home-based salon, whether it be in a shop front, what, what would be the, the like the number one successful action that you've done that you would recommend others to concentrate on? Okay, so as far as the, there's two angles, there's new, getting new clients in and then keeping the ones that you've got. Yeah. So getting new clients in is definitely uh, Facebook, Instagram, letterbox drops, um, uh, Google, you know, all, all of those. You just like plaster yourself, just like, just plaster yourself out there. Just make yourself known, um, and then and word of mouth is um, is you know that's that's like that's like the cherry on top. That's that's the best. You know, I, I know many people have heard that before. You know, word of mouth is the best form of advertising. It is. It just is. Um, so you do you get word of mouth by doing a really good job, and you know, getting results and you know being ethical and and striving for a really good uh, uh, result on your client. And then, um, as far as keeping your own clients, um, you again you have to you have to uh, be in their face all the time. So emails, SMSs, um, and putting people on programs. It's like you know making it known that they need to be coming back every month, every three weeks, every two weeks, whatever it is that they're that they're on. And that's just the state of the nation. That's just the way it's got to be. So if we want a result. That's just the way it's going to be. So. And you can't think that it can't, that it's not going to be like that. So, um, so there's two angles, right? The new people and the ones that you have. 
Perfect. Just as a quickly, when, um, so say you've just delivered to a client, do you then, before they leave the door, try and reschedule them for their next appointment? Is that like a tactic? Is that a good thing to do or? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It's really important to reschedule them because a, like, um, like I said before, they will, people forget, you know, they, they get busy. Um, you know, they, people, there's so many distractions um, so it's really important just to, to lock them in, right? Yes, they might change. They, they might cancel or whatever, but it, it doesn't matter. You just put it there and 90% of the time they will show up. And that's, that's, that's really, really key. If you just let them walk out the door, it, it just gives them the wrong message too. You know, the message is that we, we want to keep your skin looking gorgeous. So we only do that by regular facial treatments. So if you just let them say, well, see you whenever you want to, or you're giving them the wrong message. Perfect. That's yeah. such good advice. Mm. Like really good advice. I hadn't actually thought about giving them a program mm. because it gives them something to do into the future and it also makes them look into the future, mm. which adds you into their future as well. Absolutely. So yeah. Then you're going forth. So it's, it's, it's perfect as well. And it's also from a, caring viewpoint as well you want to get a product but yeah. the product's not necessarily going to happen today it's going to happen in the future so let's create that product together yeah absolutely yeah, that result yeah cool absolutely and then the other thing too like in in um in the a beauty industry you know as far as skin is concerned right um it, skin in caring for skin it's it's about the facial treatment and it's about home care mm -hmm. right so the more times you have a, a client coming into your salon for a treatment, the more opportunity you have to get them onto skincare, other skincare, new skincare. You know, you, there's just, there'll just be more sales. The, the more often a client is, is in your door, the more opportunity you have to get them onto um, skincare. So you would recommend as a salon owner, whether it be lashes or facials or waxing, that you do have some sort of range or some sort of product that firstly you believe in, right? That would be the first qualifier. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So that you can sell to your clients. Yeah. Yeah? Because if you don't sell it, some, they'll go buy it somewhere else. Perfect. Yeah. Do you find that you have to sell it to them very much? Like the actual sales process? Or is it like how, how what would be the process if you were offering me skincare? Well, I would do my recommendation, what I recommend for yeah. you to use to get a result. This is this is my recommendation. So, uh, you know, I might show you four things and I say, this is for you to get a result. This is what I suggest for you to use at home. And then I just pause and then they'll say, oh, okay. And they have a look or whatever. And then, um, and then I tell them how much it is, or they might ask me, ask me how much it is. And, um, and then that's it. They, they usually say, okay, I'll take that. Perfect. Yeah, but Perfect. if you don't give them a recommendation, it's rare that someone's going to say, well, I, I've come in here and I want to buy this, 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 this. It happens, but it's, it's, it's not the norm. Got it. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for that. That was really good. I learned something, so it was fantastic. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, my darling. Okay. Cool. Okay.